Hi, everybody. Today we are going to talk about uh, section 5.2 in your textbook, which is talking about finding the coordinate of a centroid of a shape using direct integration. So in section 5.1, we talked about uh, finding centroids using the method of composite areas. And integration is a different way to approach it, but it's also better suited to uh, shapes that are given as functions rather than as um, something prescribed, such as a quarter circle or a semicircle where you can use tabular data. So using the more general method in section 5.2, you can find the centroid of an area of any type of a shape. So I'm going to show you the techniques for how to do that today and also for, um, for talking about a surface area or a volume of rotation using the same after locating the centroid. So let's come over to the document cam and we'll start talking a little bit about uh, the theory is pretty simple, but the execution is sort of what we, what we need to concentrate on. So section 5.2, centroids by direct integration. Once again, when we talk about centroids, we are talking about that point. If uh, the geometric point that is that balances out all of the areas about that particular point. Uh, so if we have consistent thickness and consistent density of a material, the centroid will correspond. Uh, with the center of mass and the center of gravity. But we're talking about the geometric concept today. Isn't the centroid the point at which your object is balanced? Yes, that is correct. So if you have any oddly shaped uh, object, and if this isn't very odd, but where if it, you can sometimes do it by symmetry, if everything is very symmetrical, uh, like just showing my phone here, um, if you have something that's very symmetrical, you can also find the centroid using lines of symmetry. So for example, since this is symmetrical, if you could take a line down the middle and fold this and the edges would be equal to each other, you know that the centroid is going to be on that line. And if you folded it the other way, if the edges met up, that would mean that the intersection of those two lines of symmetry would be the location of the centroid. But, so yes, so, and it definitely is the balance point. So like if you have a, uh, if you have a teeter-totter, for example, and you have equal children of equal weight, for example, on the teeter-totter, uh, the equal weight will produce the same moment about that pivot point so that the centroid and the center of gravity of that teeter-totter is the same. But if one child, you know, brings his little brother with him, so you have two kids over here, that means that there's more weight on this side and so we need to reduce the moment arm. For example, we could slide the center point over here in order to keep it balanced. So. That sort of the deal. But when we talk about centroid, you're just talking about with the teeter-totter, it would be kind of a trivial problem because it's just going to be right in the middle. So uh, unless, you can, unless you can distribute the weight differently. Right. So it turns out that if we are talking about integration, that the x-coordinate of the centroid will be located at the center um, at, at a coordinate x, uh, which is the centroid of some area dA over the integral of dA, or because this is not a function, we can just write it as x dA over the area. And similarly, y bar is equal to the integral of y dA over A. Now, 
I'm going to do some examples because it's really a lot easier to see this through example. But just like when we did, um, when we did our composite areas in section uh, 5.1, the integral of x dA is very similar to the summation of those, um, the centroid of individual areas times the integral, or times the area. And so the integral of x dA is exactly equal to the first moment of that area in the y direction. And similarly, y dA is equal to the first moment in the x direction. And let me show you what I mean by that. This refers to the axis or the direction of the axis that you're rotating about. So that's why x, if you draw a graph, and you have some blob over here, and you want to find the centroid of that, if you're talking about it with respect to the y-axis, the length that you're going to use is an x-length. Whereas if you're going to rotate it about the x-axis, the, the unit that you're going to talk about is a y-axis. That's why the integral of y dA is q sub x for the first moment about the, in the x direction, and uh, q sub y is x dA. Now the other thing to remember is uh, that it's important to note that x bar and y bar are coordinates, meaning they are loca it's a location. And because it's a location, you always have to reference from a location. So if you have a shape like this, let's do something. I'm going to give you an example because, once again, that's the easiest way to understand. But let's say that you have a circle. Okay? When you talk about the centroid of the circle, you have a y bar and an x bar if you're referencing it from zero over here. Okay, now nothing changes about the circle, but if you instead reference it from here as being your zero point, this would be your y bar and this would be your x bar. So in other words, you always have to identify where your zero is, where you're referencing it from. Okay, so it's sort of a, it's sort of a funny point, but when you look at the, it's easier to see when we're doing direct integration, but when you do shapes, uh, composite shapes, sometimes like it will say, well, the centroid of this rectangle is at h over 2, which is true, but if what you wanted to rotate it about was an axis down here, you would have to add this into it as well. So in other words, you have to reference it from some point. And so when you do composite areas, you have to reference everything from the same point. So if you had that, if it was like a half of, if it was an I-beam, or half of an I-beam, you would have this centroid and this centroid, but you would have to reference them both from this axis. So you'd have to make sure to add those links in. All right, now when we talk about using those formulas of direct integration, uh, the one thing that I would like to remind you of that you know from calculus is uh, one application of the integral, and this would be a, a definite integral under a curve, is area, right? So if you I'm just picking a problem at random. Um, let's take a look at a 540 in your textbook. And we have a function that looks like this, where this value is b. I'm going to put some numbers in here for us to make it a little bit easier. And this number is a. Okay, so in other words, it's a units long in the x direction and it's b units tall in the y direction. And this curve 
is y is the function of this curve is y is equal to k times x minus a quantity squared. That's a parabolic spandrel just for whatever it's worth, but it doesn't matter what the nature of the function is. If you know the function, we can find uh, these things that we would like to know. We can find x bar and y bar. All right. So let's just say um, that B is equal to 9 inches and A is equal to uh, 6 inches. All right. I'm, I, and I'm going to use, I'll use letters, I'll use a literal equation later, but I think it's a little bit easier to see if you have um, numbers to begin with. So let's go ahead and then find out what K is, and we already know what A is. So if B is equal to 9 inches and A is equal to 6 inches, that means that Y is equal to K times X minus 6 quantity squared. And we know that at the point uh, X is equal to 0, we can say when X is equal to 0, we can see on our graph that B or Y is equal to 9. Right, so we can just use that condition. And then say 9 is equal to k times 0 minus 6 quantity squared. k is equal to 9 over negative 6 squared is 36. Uh, so k is equal to 1 fourth. So that just means that in this particular case, we could just call this x minus a quantity squared over 4. Right. All right. So now what we want to do is to find x bar and y bar. Okay. All right. Now if we're going to find x bar, that means we want to find the distance, let's say, from this axis. We're going to define this point as 0, 0. We want to find the distance from this axis to uh, the centroid of the area under this curve. And so the first thing you do is you draw a rectangle, which represents the area dA. In other words, the area of a rectangle is length times height, right? So we're taking this to the differential, which is dA. Then we literally have to decide what dA uh, looks like. It's going to be the length times the height or the width times the height. The width of this is a differential, uh, which is dx, right, because it's in the x direction and the height of which is the function itself, which is y. So the value of y is the height, because we're going from 0 to y. And the width is dx, because it's a differential. All right. So the first thing we know is, Q, let's say, x bar is equal to the integral of x dA over the area, which in this area is going to be the integral of dA. So let's do the integral of dA. We've defined dA, which is equal to uh, y dx. And we know that our dx goes from 6 to 0. And then we know that y is a function of x, so we can write it as that function. It's the integral from 6 to 0 of x minus 6 squared over 4 dx. So the area then, let me think about this. So we could say that uh, u is equal to x minus 6. So this is u squared, right? So if we do the integral of that, that's going to be uh, u to the third over 3, and dx of this is just dx, so we're fine. All right, so the area of this then is going to be x to the minus si x minus 6 to the third power over 3 times 4, evaluated at 6 and 0. Okay, 
So the area then on the top limit, 6 minus 6 is 0. But I subtract from that. zero minus six to the third power over 12, which is six to the third power over 12. I've got a minus sign here where I don't know why that is. Um, I have something wrong with that. Not sure. Uh, anyway, so six, this is six times two. 6 times 6 times 6, that cancels. So I get 36 over 2, or the area is 18 inches squared. All right. Now, first of all, let's go back and see if that makes sense. If this were an entire rectangle, it would be 9 times 6, which is 54. So that means that this is approximately a third of the area of a rectangle between those two points. Does that seem logical? It does, doesn't it? All right. So now... To find x bar, we also need to find, we're going to take it and divide it by this, but we need to find the integral of x dA. All right. So we know x is just x, but we know that dA is what we found up here, which is x minus 6 squared over 4. So this is my x, this is my y, and dx, okay? And this goes from zero, or from six to zero, once again, on the x-axis. Okay. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this as a polynomial expansion. Multiplied by x, all over four dx. So I get the integral from 6 to 0 of x to the third minus 12x squared plus 36 dx. I'm just doing it so I can integrate it differently. Okay. All right. So then I get, when I do that function, let me get rid of this. We have, um, that would be, that's actually my Q sub Y, is equal to X to the fourth over four minus X to the 12 X to the third over three plus 36 X evaluated at six and zero. This simplifies to four. So on the upper limit, I get six to the fourth power over four minus four times six to the third power plus 36 times six. And then on the lower limit, everything goes to zero. Sorry, I have a question real quick. Yes, please. When you carried your x through in the integral, I, yes. why was it not x cubed minus 12 x squared plus 36 x? Does that make a difference? It should. If I did it, if I, I may have done it incorrectly. So here I said this times this is x to the third. Yeah. This times this is minus 12x squared. Oh, see, I just stuck it in right here. I, I said it to myself that there's an x there, but I just put it right here. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I just decided not to. Oh, and then I didn't square it or do anything with it. Do you see how it is with me? There you go. Okay. How's that? That looks yeah. better, doesn't it? Thank you. So we have, uh, this would be 18x squared is here instead of on that. So that would be 18x squared. And then everything on the lower limit is 0. And this would be 6. Okay. 36 to 18. Q sub y equals, um, yeah, let's get the calculator out here. 6 raised to the fourth power is 36 times 36, which is... Uh, 1,296 divided by 4. So my first term is 324. My second term is 36 times 6 times 4, which is 864. And then my bottom term is 18 times 6 squared, which is 648. Okay, so I have 648 plus 324 minus 8 
64 equals, that value is 108. And my units, if you look at my original integral, I'm going to have uh, length times length squared. And since these are in inches, that's going to be inches to the third. So then Q sub Y divided by area is equal to my X bar, which means it's 108 inches to the third over the area, which is 18 inches. So 108 divided by 18 is 6. I kind of have something funky with my area because it shouldn't be that far over. It should be closer in here. Oh, no, that's right. I have another weird question. Sure, please ask. Um, on, so back on the integral, when you have it, because it's all over 4, right? When you start it Yeah. Off. So do you have to do anything with, do you do anything with that 1 4? Yeah. Like yes, oh, you certainly do. The whole thing would be over 4. But I have, I have, a, I have a deeper problem here, which is make, but yes, you're absolutely correct, Alexa. I don't, Alexa, I don't mean to, no, but you're I'm absolutely sorry. correct. But there's something else that's bugging me about what I've done here because there's something fundamentally wrong with my solution and my area looks incorrect to me. Because if you think about it, my X bar in, oh wait, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, maybe so. If that's just divided by 4, right? Did I do that? Ah. So, carry the four back to so if I do that, am I going to be okay? So instead of 108, is that just 108 divided by 4? Is that 27 divided by 18? Which gives me an answer of 1.5 inches for my X bar. That makes me much happier because... It's instead of, because all of the mass or all of the areas over here, isn't it? So the idea of X bar being at one and a half inches from the zero seems logical to me. Okay, thank you very, very much. So you actually were solving something very, very clearly that actually spoke back to what was wrong with what I had done originally. So I appreciate that. Yes, you cannot just eliminate fours from equation because you feel like it, so. <laughs> so, all right, let's take a look again. Now what we're going to do is we've got, Q, we've got our X bar, which is at one and a half inches from that coordinate. Now we want to find Y bar. Well, we know that Y bar is going to equal the integral of Y dA over area. And we've already found the area, which is 100, no, no, no. 18 inches, 18 inches squared, yeah. So it's going to be the integral of y dA over 18 square inches. Okay, now the deal though is that when we do y dA, we're going to have to do one, we can do one of two things. If we leave our element like this, where's our y bar of this element? It's not y anymore, is it? It's just going to be in the middle. So the y bar of this element, we have to go back to the physical reality of this element. Since it's a rectangle, its y bar is not, if you go this way, x bar is at x because this is infinitesimally thin. But if we go up, it's half of that. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So if we keep it oriented this way, and they always subscript it like this to tell you that you're getting to y bar of the element. So in this case, this is going to be y over 2 to get to that, that. And then we can use the same term. We can use the x dA, uh, which is going to be y over 2 times my x. This is an x. This is y dA. Sorry about that. My y, which is a function of x, which is, hang on a second. Do I really want to do that? If I do that, I just want to leave it as y because I don't want to, if I have a y dA, hang on a second. I have to redraw this. I have a spandrel that looks like this. If we want to continue using this, 
we would say that the y bar, let's just say q sub x, is equal to, oh, it's not, it's the q sub x is y dA. All right, so what's my dA in this case? Well, y to the element is going to be y over 2. There we go. And then the dA can either be dx, y times dx, which is fine. Or we could switch it, and we could do it as this sort of an element. So I think I'll do both, but I'll do this one to begin with. All right? So here I get y squared over 2 dx to take the integral of that. Okay, well, I know from my original work that y is equal to this, okay? So I can substitute that in, and I can say then that q sub x is equal to the integral, and since I'm still using a dx, it's going to go from 6 to 0, of y squared. So in other words, I have x minus a over 4, where x over a is squared and the quantity is squared, and then that's over 2 dx. Okay, so then if I work this out, I can expand that polynomial. q sub x equals, just to square that, we get x squared minus, oh, and I figured out this was 6, right? Yeah, this is a 6. All right, so if we do that, so then we get minus 12x plus 36 all over 4. That quantity is squared, and we divide it by 2 dx. And so if we square that, we're going to have a big old mess. So I'm just going to leave it as that squared. This is from 6 to 0 of this. Uh, squared over 4 squared, which is 16 times 2 dx, right? And so that means that my q sub x is equal to the integral from here to here of uh, x squared minus 12x plus 36 squared over 32 dx. Okay, now that is definitely an executable uh, integral, and we could do that. We could have left it as, and this is where you might want to take a look and decide if you're going to do this. Like when I, poly, when I did this polynomial expansion, perhaps I just should have left this as x minus 6 squared squared again, so to the fourth power over 16. Now that might have been an easier one to handle, right? Because then my u, I don't, the dx is just right there. So instead of expanding it, may just want to leave it as that, which is going to be x minus 6 quantity to the fourth power over 16 times, because that was squared 16, 32, right, dx. That's going to be a lot easier to integrate, to handle, isn't it? Because otherwise I'm going to have to do a big old three-term polynomial multiplier. All right. So that means uh, x minus 6 to the fifth power over 5 times 32 evaluated at 6 and 0. Okay, so once again, my lower, my upper limit, I get 6 minus 6, so that goes to 0. But on the other limit, I'm going to get minus the quantity 0 minus 6 raised to the fifth power all divided by 160. So if I get 6, negative 6 raised to the fifth power, where are you, my cap thing? Would we leave that the, the minus negative 6, would that become positive 6 to the fifth no, power? No, not necessarily, because the negative here is raised to the fifth power. Okay. Now, that will become 
right? Because it's it's it will a, negative a negative, negative. Right, yeah. exactly. So I could just say six raised to the six times six five times two three four. Ugh, that's what you get for not knowing where the buttons are on your calculator. One, two, three, four, if you just did five. Just mm -hmm. the button right above the divide, that straight. Above line. divide. Uh, so the second button. Alpha. Oh, there it is. There's my cap. I've got a cap right here, so okay, I could just do that. For that seven, seven. Yep. So you could go six, cap, five equals. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Divided by 160. So that Q uh, sub X is 48.6, and that's going to be an inch just to the third. Okay. Well, I know that y bar is equal to q sub x over area. So that's 48.6 inches to the third over the area, which I found before to be 18 square inches. So this is inches, and I have 48.6 divided by 18, and that value is 2.7 inches. Okay? So if I go back to my original picture, here we go, let's come right here. This is 9, so what it's saying is my y bar is a little bit, is like in this area right here. And that makes sense because most of the area is down here, right? So that means that my x bar is at 1.5 inches. My y bar is at 2.7 inches. And so to go back to... Isaac's uh, point, if we were to put a balance point at about one and a half inches and 2.7 inches, it would be about right there. And that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because there's so much more mass oriented at the axes. Or so much more area. We're really talking about areas. So, so yeah. Do you guys have any questions? All right, very good. So I'm going to set up one other kind of a problem for you. Just takes this idea and does one other thing to it. And what it really does is emphasizes the literal nature of the, um, of the curves and the area. That DA that you draw, you have to reference back to what that is. And we're really, it's something that's a little less typical at this point of being used to talking about an area um, of, a, of a differential area as being a literal uh, something that you're actually working with geometrically. All right. So on problem 541, here we have two spandrels. We have the top function, y1, is equal to k1x squared. That's just parabolic, right? And then on the bottom, we have y2. Do these both go through zero? Yes, they do. y2, and do they meet here? Okay, they meet here at b. Okay, like that. y2 is equal to k2 x to the third. All right. Now we're told that the height is B and the X coordinate or the width is A. All right. Now, <clears throat> so the thing that I want to do is if you draw this area and we call that differential area, in this case it's DX times Y. Okay. Here, y is not from the top function to the bottom, is it? What, how would you define y on that differential area? Top function minus the bottom function, right? Like if you had a line like this, if you had something, the value here is 3 and the value here is 1, how do you find the height of that rectangle? You take this and subtract this, right? So you do the same thing here. So y, in this case, is going to be k1x squared minus k2x to the third, and then we still have our dx. So that means that if we are looking for q 
q sub x, okay? In other words, let's talk about q sub y first. q sub y, which is going to be equal to the integral of x uh, dA. x from here to here is just x, but dA is k1x squared minus k2x to the third dx, and my limits are x limits, which are a and 0. Okay? The area is just going to be the integral of this, right? Area is equal to the integral of this, and once again, we're going from a to 0. Okay? Now, q sub x... Uh, is going to be equal to y dA, but y is going to be halfway between those two, right? So in other words, it's going to be this, let's just call this function, I'm going to call function 2, function 1. So to get halfway in the middle, what is y to the element? Well, it's going to be the value of function 2 plus half of this distance which is function 1 minus function 2 over 2, right? And if you finish this off, what you'll see is it's function 2 plus function 1 over 2 minus function 2 over 2, and you can bring those two terms together, and you can think of that as being 2 over 2. So you get function 2 over 2 plus function 1 over 2, or the average of those two, right? So here, this is going to be function 1 plus function 2 over 2. That's for my y to the element. Then my dA is going to be the y, which is function 1 minus function 2 times dx. And since we have x limits, that's a and 0. Okay. And then you can just plug in those values and execute the integral, and you will get your answers for both of those things. You don't have to redo A. Remember, once you do the integral of dA, you're done. You can just do it either way. Now, the other thing you can do, um, and we will do this a little bit more in Chapter 9, but you can literally, if it becomes too cumbersome to do it this way, you can turn your elements so that it looks like this. But then what you have, like for example, you have y, this is a dx, or dy, isn't it, times x. Then x is going to be this minus this, and uh, x dA, sorry, which is, but this is going to be a dy element times this distance x. Okay, so in other words, whatever you're working with literally relate it back to the rectangle that you draw. Okay? All right, do you guys have any questions? Okay, so what I will do on our Moodle page is I'll put this in for lecture number 20, and I've got a couple of homework problems from the first section in chapter 5. I'll put up two or three more homework problems from the second section in chapter 5, and then uh, we'll move forward to section 5.3 on Friday. Now, the other thing uh, on Friday, I may or may not be physically here. I have to take my mom to a doctor's appointment in Billings, and so I don't know what time that's going to be yet. So if I'm not physically here, I will record 